You're watching the Chucktown Win Report Extended Weekday Outlook from Monday, September the 14th through Friday, September the 18th. Well, here's our frontal boundary that passed through over the weekend, and here's the high pressure that built down into the southeast as expected as it came down from the north along the jet stream and is expected to slide east and then eventually up to the north of our Virginia, Maryland area. And this is where this high pressure is going to take residency for pretty much the entire week. And that's going to bring down an east-northeast flow along our coastline starting today and then build all the way down into Georgia, Florida is more of an easterly flow all the way through Friday. So today, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Now the center of high pressure right now is at 1,020 millibars. As it slides east and then north, we're expecting that to build to 1,028 millibars. So for today, this, this coastal troughing that we're seeing here is pretty far removed. So the gradient does not look to tighten that much today. We're looking at maybe low teens peaks. We may see a higher surge this morning just from the initial cooler air building down into the area. However, this as this wraparound wind comes around the high pressure, this, this troughing down in this direction will start to lift and we'll actually get it closer to the coastline. The increases of rain, chances of rain will increase to here and here and then maybe even close to South Carolina as that east-northeast high pressure wind builds or interacts down into the trough and sort of bites down into it. We call that the wedging effect where that happens you actually get an increased gradient so today today starts out a little bit on the weak side and then we start to build each day through the week so probably by tomorrow as this high pressure gets a little the center gets a little further away uh, things start to build we probably see more solid low teens and as we get into Wednesday where the high pressure is actually centered in this direction pretty far away we get that wedging effect with that trough and then we start to see mid and upper teens and possibly even 20s just depends on how things work out so too early to call that just yet because we don't have too much cooler air the air temperature the air mass with this down for the southeast region keeps us in the low 80s especially because our, our warmer land and then the air the water temperatures are 83 degrees so we're not looking at too much of a spread there if we had 76 to 78 degrees of cooler air diving down we might have a different outcome but uh, this one's not quite the cooler pattern or cold pattern yet it is a cooler pattern overall for our fall for our typical fall like season okay so I want to take a look at our data scope from weather flow I want to take a quick peek at the outer banks we can see this northerly air driving down into the southeast region and so we have 12 13 knots it's more of a northwest wind up in that direction uh, northerly and then north down into Ocracoke as we get down into Winya Bay near Georgetown this is in the, the outer cape of South Carolina here we're seeing 18 knots and this is a little bit of an initial surge so we're seeing this going on as this cooler air spills down into the southeast region we're actually seeing a surge a gust up to about looks like about 24 25 knots and we're expecting this to kind of slowly come down as time goes on over the next few hours uh, there could be a slight gradient that could keep that wind up in that area but as we get down into Charleston we see these offshore values showing lower numbers as a result of land shadowing. Now we do see 13 knots at James Holland Yacht Club seems to be more open to the fetch across the harbor whereas the Fort Sumter sensor gets a little bit of land shadowing from Sullivan's Island. So we're looking at eight knots, six knots on the beaches with offshore flow. Probably the more realistic picture here is that we're seeing 13 knots overall over the open areas of Charleston. That's going to be our build for this morning. We'll probably see that number come up along those initial surges. So I want to take a look at the models for the area and let these load. And what we're looking at is most models are in agreement for the winds to lean more east northeast as the day goes on. Probably sometime by early afternoon we'll see those leans but up until then we're going to be looking at more of an offshore north northeasterly to northeast flow and then as, and it, as the day progresses we'll see those uh, we'll see the the winds lean more east northeast now the gradient like I said does not look that strong because we just have cool dry air over the area but as we get into tomorrow we start to see these models trend upwards in our North American five kilometer model which is a high resolution it is showing mid teens it's above the other ones uh, that might be more realistic in fact we may see a couple of extra knots that the models don't pick up on just from acceleration effects so as we get into Wednesday we see the continuation of low teens from the medium resolution models but the more realistic thing could be mid to upper teens again and as we get into uh, Thursday and Friday uh, we see that 
stayed the same pretty much for those medium resolution models. So when we talk about how high pressure builds down into the area, now right now we have this sort of north 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 northeasterly flow building down, but as we get an onshore lean of winds, we start to see where the land and sea interaction along the barrier islands have an effect. And when we get near coastal troughing, we have a little bit of juice in the air, a little bit of moisture. We add what's called the backdoor sea breeze effect. So we have this cooler air diving down and then swooping up through the barrier islands and then they rise as thermals inland. So you get these areas of thunderstorming back here away from the ocean. And what that does is it provides a good avenue of exhaust from these winds driving down. They actually have, now they have a lifting mechanism inland. So that accelerates the winds along these areas along the barrier islands where the land heating is affecting and causing those winds to accelerate. So that's sort of our acceleration, especially when you get cooler air. If you have five to 10 degrees of cooler air over the warmer waters, you actually get a faster acceleration process. Any more than that, when you start getting 20 and 30 degrees difference, you start getting steam fog and other factors that sort of create holes in the wind and, and it reduces the quality of the wind. Whereas when you get some of that near coastal troughing, you actually get some some really nice clean cleaner winds with more of a, a five to seven knot spread versus a ten to fifteen knot spread. Okay, so I definitely want to take a look at let's see, we'll look at this map, and you can clearly see this drier air. There's an upper trough up up in this direction here. We're expecting another little bit of an upper trough to to make its appearance down into the southeast region. That will help allow lift some of this area of troughing from the Gulf of Mexico up across Florida, Georgia, and, and into South Carolina right off the coast. And that's that will also help our, our gradient build there. Earth.nullschool.net map. Here's Charleston. Here is the center of high pressure over the Appalachians. As I said before, this center of high pressure is expected to drift east and then north and then build it or take its residency up in that area. Okay, so I want to look at the tropics real quick. Okay, so here's our peak season is September the 10th. That was four days ago. Here we are on the 14th. We're still in the peak area of the hurricane season. We're seeing a little bit of activity, however, not seeing anything near us. Uh, there's activity ab abroad over in the intertropical convergence zone and a small area in the Gulf of Mexico to talk about. So let's look at the precipitable water and we can see where the, the more juice, the juicier air is. And here's our intertropical convergence zone right here along the 10 degree mark. And we can see a little bit of spinning activity going on. There's a there's a couple of areas that, that National Hurricane has some interest in right now. Here's one here and then another one coming off the African coast. And we've got another area over here in the western Gulf of Mexico right along the Mexican uh, Ocean border or the Mexican Gulf border. So if you look at the Saharan air layer, we see that the dust at the mid-levels has relaxed right over the intertropical convergence zone. So there's sort of a decent little highway and favorable environments for these systems to sort of get get organized as they head off to the west. Here's one here and we, we actually have, believe it or not, remnants of grace way over here above Hispaniola and, and uh, heading towards the Cuban area. So we look at the tropical Atlantic. Here's remnants of grace. I'm sorry, it's right here just above the uh, above Haiti and heading off to the west. Most models take this area right into the Gulf and, and possibly develop the remnants of grace into something. So we'll have to keep an eye. Grace could always, the remnants of grace could always get caught up in this trough here as well and get pulled off to the north and, and not be anything at all. But you can see a little bit of activity over here in the intertropical convergence zone and another area here and then this area in the western Gulf of Mexico. So if you look at the Atlantic five day outlook, here we go. We have this area, which is uh, it's a low percentage, 20 to 30 percent, 20 percent in the next two days, 30 percent in the next five days. This is Tropical Invest 94L, and this one is expected if to make if it's going to make landfall as any kind of tropical depression or storm, it's going to be in the next few days, and it's going to be probably heading towards Tampico, Mexico, make landfall there. Here is Invest 93L. This one it has a very high percentage of developing into a tropical storm, and the model tracks take this to the north and to the west, to the northwest. However, uh, this one may go a little bit further west than anticipated once it goes a little bit more north. Now, there's an upper level shear environment as the further north it goes, so it may not make it very far. But here's our next wave coming off of Africa. This one has a much better chance of, of developing in its environment and heading more to the west 
as time goes on. So uh, we'll do a quick recap on the southeast region watching this high pressure. Go over the Maryland, Virginia area. We're looking at east north to we east northeast winds all week long, building each day. Today lower, weaker. Tomorrow we start to see low, maybe mid teens. We'll say 11 to 15 or 12. To, we'll say 12 to 16 knots for tomorrow. As we get into Wednesday, that's when we start to see a favorable build. So we're looking at probably 14 to 18 knots with possible higher surges in the afternoon during peak heating. As we get into Thursday, we'll keep 14 to 18 knots, and then Friday will start to lessen that as this high pressure starts to weaken. So as long as the high pressure stays at 1,024 to 1,028 millibars, we'll see the higher builds over the Charleston area. And that will do it for the Chucktown Wind Report. Thanks for watching.